from our uh, one or two jangling nerves and also uh, a certain amount of uh, trepidation regarding the equipment. Uh, equally, I may well have forgotten how to do this and that this is at least a year since I uh, stood here. So again, please do bear with me. Those of you with uh, very good memories will maybe remember some years ago now our, uh, our friend Bruce who was uh, preaching a sermon on holiness who started by uh, reminding us that uh, in church there was no smoking, no spitting and no swearing. I need to add to that list uh, this morning friends, notably no sinning, okay? Our risk assessment says do not sin, however tempted you might be. Um, also no mingling folks in terms of uh, the idea is that we come in and we go out in an orderly and safe fashion. And worst of all, there is no property afterwards. Okay? I break it to you gently. I'm just going to start with a prayer and then we've got uh, a YouTube song, See What a Morning. If you'd like to stand during the songs, that's great, but I appreciate you might get uh, uh, you know, a little bit kind of affixed to your scene, please do so. Equally, if you don't want to stand, that's absolutely terrific. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful opportunity that we have to come here for the first time for a long time and to bring ourselves into your presence. And Lord, we pray for all that will happen this morning, for all the people who are assisting us in any way, for those friends at home who will be watching, Father, we pray a blessing. So, Lord, be with us as we meet together, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. What a tremendous song to start with, what a proclamation of our faith, Christ is risen. I'm, uh, I'm reading St. Mark's Gospel in my own Bible at the moment. Uh, as with all good things, I started in chapter 1 and I'm now on, uh, I think, chapter 7. It's slow going, I have to say, but uh, working your way sequentially through one of the Gospels, uh, sometimes you need to kind of sit down and think about it rather. So I'm on Mark at the moment, which means equally, folks, you're on Mark as well uh, this month. Um, just to kind of explain what's going to happen, uh, everything's going to be on the screen. Uh, hopefully everything is going to be on the screen. In a moment or two, we're going to have uh, a Bible reading from Mark 6, verse 30 to 44. It's a very well-known passage of Scripture. It's the miracle where Jesus uh, feeds the 5,000 of men, although of course there would be women and children added to that as well. So we're very much on kind of home turf there, aren't we? But we know that story uh, very well. Um, and then just going to say a, a few words, and then we've got a couple of songs, and uh, we'll move sequentially and hopefully at a pace through it. So hopefully this will take around about 45, 40 minutes, something like that. So, Bible reading time, Mark 6, verse 30 to 44. Thank you. gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and talked about. Then, because so many people were coming and going, they didn't even have a chance to eat. He said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. 
But he answered, You give them something to eat. They said to him, That would take more than half a year's wages. A week ago, we spent that much on bread, give it and take it. How many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. But the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was five thousand. Perhaps there are sick and elderly people 
being carried by relatives. Perhaps sorry, young children running ahead, or women chatteringly excitedly. Skeptics, believers, scribes and teachers, rich people, poor people. And as always, the great unwashed, the unwanted, and the outcasts, all chasing the boat as it bobs and weaves across the lake. And the amazing thing is that every last one of them felt compelled to be in his presence. They were so amazed and thrilled at what they had already seen and heard from Jesus that they were not satisfied. Their desire was to be with him regardless of the cost. And so it is that they run and run and run. When I read those verses, it raised a series of questions in my mind about our church at this important time. Once COVID is done and dusted, what should be our priority as a church? Will we have lost some members? Yes, I think it's likely that some folks will have drifted away or made a conscious decision to worship elsewhere. Equally, some of our most cherished members have gone to be with their Lord over the last 12 months or so. And it is right that as we meet together for the first time, we pause and we acknowledge their absence. Will we have to scale back on some of those things that we did prior to COVID? Yes, I imagine that we might. And we may well need to reconfigure what we do and how we do it. Will we still be struggling with those tensions and issues that we were struggling with prior to COVID? Yes, I guess so. But let me say that the essential purpose of this church is to seek the presence of Jesus Christ. The essential purpose of this church is to seek the presence of Jesus Christ. Tell me, are we like the crowds in Mark 6, who were so desperate to be with him that they ran and ran and ran, if necessary to the point of exhaustion, so that they could simply sit at his feet? Do you remember the words of Jesus in St. Matthew's Gospel, where he's talking about priorities? And he says, looking at his disciples and the people around, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Friends, don't worry about what we can and what we can't do. Don't worry about the future or money. Or people. God has not finished with us yet. He will again powerfully use this place, this church, this people to build his kingdom if we learn to sit at his feet and listen to his voice. And see what happens in verse 34. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. Because they were like sheep without shepherd, so he began teaching them many things. In the Greek it says that Jesus was caused to have compassion. The implication is that the desire and the commitment and the urgency within the crowd powerfully stirred the very soul of Jesus. And it says he sits down and he teaches them many things. And what a teaching session that must have been. I guess that the people present 
would never forget the time that they sat there and heard Jesus speak directly to them, their hearts and their minds, their minds and their souls. So far, so good. But then the whole thing goes haywire. The disciples who you might remember have already skipped lunch. Now fear that they're going to miss their team. And point out to Jesus that they are in the middle of nowhere and haven't phones or homes to go to. And by implication, no one has left. Such is the charisma and power of Jesus when in his presence no one wants to leave. And we know what happens. Five bits of bread and a couple of fish are rounded up. The people sit down. And then we come to verse 41. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to give to the people. You know, I've always wondered about that prayer, that blessing of Jesus. And the English translation here doesn't do it justice, but the Greek implies that Jesus turns his face to the skies and blesses the heavens, inviting the very presence of his Father into that moment of time. And then the miracle happens. All the people are fed, they have far more than they need. Such is the superabundance of heaven when heaven steps in. And just as a sign, you know, I, I've always struggled with that story from chapter 24 of St. Luke's Gospel. That one that we often read just after Easter. You know the one, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They're walking from, I think, Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they're in low spirits. And if you remember, they too are privileged to hear a tremendous teaching session from Jesus. Although, of course, they don't know it's him. It says that their hearts were burning within them, but they didn't recognize there is the Lord. That is until verse 30 of chapter 24. You know the story, it's late in the day, they go into the house, and it's supper time. And we read that Jesus takes the bread, tears it in two, turns his face to his father, and blesses the heavens. And then a miracle happens, as God himself touches the eyes and the hearts of the disciples, and they see, and they understand. What was it about the blessing of Jesus that caused thousands to be fed and made the oblivious recognize him? One day, we'll find out. So what do we make of it? Often when we consider this passage of scripture, we concentrate either on Jesus, the disciples, or the miracle itself. But this morning, I challenge you to place yourself in the story and for a moment to be part of that crowd on the shore. I suppose that some people seeing Jesus get into the boat thought, it's all over, and simply turned away and went home. Maybe it was fun while it lasted, but you know, I'm too busy, I'm too tired, I've got better things to do. I'm not going all that way around the shore. They have no commitment, no staying power. But what about you? Are you running after Jesus? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these tremendous words from St. Mark's Gospel. But thank you, Lord, that 17,000 years ago you worked in the lives of people around you. 
and we can bless them both with, with bread and with fish, but also with tremendous teaching. Lord, open our eyes that we may see you. Help us as we run the life of faith and the race of faith. Help us, Lord, to run after you with commitment and passion. For this we ask in Jesus' name.
remembering particularly any that we know who are sick or ill. And indeed, let us bring before the Lord any other situation which is on our hearts. I've just got one or two notices to, uh, to bring to you. Just to clarify that uh, we are intending to hold a morning service every Sunday from now on here at Charles Street from 10.30. The intention is to work uh, to live stream. Uh, you will need to register, as you know folks, our accommodation is limited under the current rules and clearly we don't quite know what's going to happen in the future. Next week at 10:30, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Strim will be leaving us uh, with a service based around Christine A. Uh, and the rest of the services will be led by people from our own congregation. Also, just to say that uh, it is our intention going forward to test out evening services as well. And the first one will be held on the 13th of June and will be led by Peter Bates. Uh, with the sacrament of, uh, of Holy Communion. Just also to remind you that the church is open for prayer on the second and four Saturdays of the month. If you'd like to come and pray for a while, uh, please do so from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Hopefully all of you are also receiving Mel's COVID newsletter, which brings you up to date with all of the, uh, all of the news and uh, gossip and information from Charles Street. And just to remind you that he is holding coffee and chat on Zoom every Monday at 3 o'clock. Let's just pray. Lord Jesus, we pray and bless you. Every home, every person represented here this morning. And everyone who has watched the live stream and will watch the recording. Father, we just pray that you would use us as your church in this place at this time. Bless us, Lord, and keep us safe. 